All right, so I wanted to take a quick look at uh, an issue of Mr. A by Steve Ditko, um, an underground comic that Steve Ditko put out after uh, he had left Marvel. Uh, very interesting character. Kind of reminds me a little bit of The Question, which I believe is another character that uh, Ditko invented or created. Um, I look at this comic book for the art. I definitely don't look at this comic book for the story because the story is just fucking weird. Um, but I kind of just wanted to open this up and kind of take just take a quick look at uh, Steve Ditko. Steve Ditko's work that isn't uh, Spider Man. And uh, just kind of go. As you can see, these pages are very busy. There's one, two, three, four. Fifteen panels per page. A lot of panels going on here. Uh, it's interesting because I feel like Steve had a story that he wanted to tell. Um, a lot of dialogue, too. ton of dialogue. At some points, it kind of looks like it just takes over the drawing. And the story's just super convoluted. But the art's great. You can definitely see that kind of Spider-Man art that we know. And uh, that we know and love. Gonna take a look at this. I mean, it's this is a hard book to kind of uh, to cover because it's just so much dialogue and the art is just it just it just takes a back seat and it's like I don't think that Steve Ditko. I think this was Steve Ditko's attempt to be like you remember that Spider Man thing. Yeah, I I created all of that, and you know I'm gonna prove it. And unfortunately. There was no editor here to kind of stop Steve from sort of, you know, maybe you should cut that down a little bit. Maybe you should pay attention to the art and have the story there. But, you know, the the art is great. And it's definitely one of the, he's definitely one of those artists that I can definitely see a lot of people kind of looking at his art and going, man, I wish I could draw like him. And I'm going to take this bit and that bit of his drawing and kind of make it my own. Very, very much an inspiration, very much one of those guys that, you know, maybe is as important as Kirby. He might be. Um, I mean, he was around exactly the same time. He had a huge impact on Marvel, just like Kirby did. I think Kirby put a little, little bit more into the Marvel Universe than uh, Ditko did. But Ditko, I mean, man, you create Spider-Man, that's a pretty big deal. So we're finally kind of seeing a page that doesn't have a ton of uh, dialogue in it. But again, we still see these very cramped, a lot of panels on the page. So I guess we can just say that we have 12. We have 12 panels here. I mean, just a lot of panels on the page. But man, I mean, I love that expression. The inking is great. I don't know... <clears throat> if he inked his own stuff at Marvel. Um, I can't remember, but man, is he a great inker. So obviously the story of Mr. A is, uh, you know, there's good and there's bad. It's black and white. You know, there's no gray area. And uh, Mr. A's whole thing is he has this card, and I guess my assumption is he throws it at you and tells you, you here's, you know, the black side, so... You've done something bad, I guess. You know, Steve Ditko was a weird, weird fellow. But uh, great artist. Absolutely amazing artist. Um, I know I use the term amazing a lot, but I mean, it's just, you know. I mean, what else can I say? I mean, I'm not going to cover shitty art here. If I do, then it's probably going to be me ripping it apart, which I don't really kind of want to be that kind of channel. So, you can definitely see, you know, he didn't grow much from the, from the Spider-Man days, you know, but it looks, it's, it's, it's great in its own way, but it also just kind of looks very sterile, you know, very boring, very simplistic, but then you kind of see a couple action scenes here, you know, I think this book inspired people like uh, Alan Moore. 
kind of go a little bit off the deep end. And I guess it was like the first comic book that was, you know, was like, was heady. Like there was like thought to it, um, which I could definitely see why it would inspire people like Alan Moore and Grant Morrison and Neil Gaiman, all those British guys, because it was very different than what was coming out at the time. You know, 1975, I mean, you were still getting your, uh, your, I, you know, your, your Batman that felt very, you know, kid-like and, you know, Superman that was very kid-like and, you know, Marvel was sort of starting to transition into like the Chris Claremont era. And, you know, Steve Ditko was kind of doing this book that was more of like, you know, you need to be, you need to be a little, I guess a little bit intelligent to understand it, but really you don't because it just doesn't make any fucking sense even if you are intelligent. It's just all over the place, but art's great. You know, it's great to see, you know, Steve Ditko draw a bunch of figures you never have the uh, same face syndrome where anybody looks similar to one another. Um, everyone's different, which is, I can I can definitely, you know, say that about this book. Um, not really my cup of tea. I bought it for like nothing because I just wanted to see, you know, what Steve Ditko's stuff looked like when there was no Spider-Man attached or Doctor Strange. And you pretty much get the same thing, you know. Yeah. Way too many panels, I feel like. I mean, I, I like storytelling when you have a lot of panels. And, you know, when you have like six or seven panels. But when you start getting into the range of like nine, twelve, fifteen, like at the beginning... It's a little too much, I feel like. A little, a little too much. But I guess it's kind of Ditko being like, oh, there's, you know, Marvel's using seven panels and DC's using six. I'm going to use 15. And you can definitely see how that inspired things like The Watchmen. I mean, you got a lot of weird shit like this going on. You know, it's a, it's a weird book. It's definitely a weird book. But uh, I tried to read it and I was just like, I don't, this, I'm just, it, it's not that it was like totally confusing it was just fucking boring <laughs> i mean i think that's i think that's the uh the worst defense of it it was just it was just it was boring and then you get the ec libs i guess uh some ec i guess a, an ad for ec comics i don't know if that had anything to do with ditko maybe they printed this book what a weird cover what a weird back cover just, just, man, weird book. But anyways, that's Steve Ditko's Mr. A. Sorry I couldn't do anything more than being like, that's weird, and there's so many panels on the page, and the dialogue's too much, and the story's very weird and convoluted, but I mean, that's just kind of just wanted to take a dive into that. I will say, if you are a uh, Steve Ditko fan, uh, this definitely has your Ditko fix, and it's a, quite a lengthy book. I got to about, like, here... I was just like, eh, I'm just going to look at the art. I'm not the biggest Ditko fan, because I feel like his art is a little... It's just like kind of like that classic feel to it. I know he inspired so many people, and you know we wouldn't have the artists that we have today if it wasn't for Steve Ditko, but I don't see anything that I particularly like in here. Other than he definitely knew how to make different faces and expressions. And he definitely knew how to make unique looking characters. But it's just too crowded. And just way too much stuff is going on and way too much dialogue. So um, if you are a big Steve Ditko fan and you think that Mr. A is great, leave a comment and let me know what you love so much about Mr. A. Because I'm, I'm trying. I'm just really trying. Maybe I'm just not intelligent enough to kind of understand this because Alan, people like Alan Moore will swear by this and Grant Morrison will swear by this. I just find it, it just somebody's trying to like say like, oh, I'm smart and here's why I'm smart. It's kind of, the best way I could describe it is like, it's like reading, it's like reading a Hemingway book. 
You know, it's like, I'm going to challenge you more with language than I'm going to give you a good story. And I feel like Steve Ditko did the same thing here. I'm going to challenge you with an idea more so than I'm going to give you a good story. Um, the art's fine. The art's great. Um, but, I mean, this is a book where I definitely story does absolutely matter in art and in comics. Because if you don't have that story there, you can have the greatest art in the world, and it's not going to be uh, very enjoyable to go through. So, uh, yeah, Steve Ditko, Mr. A. A lot of just talking heads, a lot of things that like I feel like young artists kind of make mistakes with. Not a lot of pushing perspective, a lot of straight-on drawings, you know... Uh, there's some motion there. I mean, it's some, a lot of it's stiff. A lot of, you know, I want to see, I'm a figure guy. I want to see a lot of the figure. I want to see more stuff like this as opposed to this. You know, I mean, this isn't bad. This isn't bad. I mean, maybe it was just that Ditko had a skill set and said, I'm only going to bring out these skill sets when I feel like it's necessary. Maybe it's pacing. Maybe that was his way of pacing. I don't know, but I don't particularly like it. So that is uh, Steve Ditko's Mr. Ray. I do not have the first issue because... Fuck if I'm going to pay fucking like 85 bucks for number one. And there's only two issues of Mr. A, by the way. So if you want, if you're a big St Steve Ditko fan and this is something that's, you know, down your alley, I would advise you to go pick it up. Me, on the other hand, I'm not a big fan, but uh, if you are a big Steve Ditko fan, definitely leave me a message or a uh, comment and let me know uh, why you love this book so much.